I, I'm, I'm interested in this question of just the soundness of our, of our uh, strategic arsenal and, and how we were just talking about Cheyenne Mountain, the extraordinary uh, fact that Mike Allen of Axios recent, just sent a, uh, uh, an email out with his daily beef it, it focused on Cheyenne Mountain, what would uh, an attack on North Korea look like, where would it happen, and you told me that you used to work in Cheyenne Mountain, it used to be a pretty crappy place. And so I'm interested in this question of where we are in terms of the solvency of our nuclear arsenal and that being communicated as a turn. Because everyone I know tells me our systems are basically not necessarily modern, that, that we have a lot of uh, uh, gaps in the system. We're thinking of spending about $1.7 trillion over 30 years. And so when you're out there basically trying to you know, send a message to adversaries, watch out, we're the you know, slickest uh, uh, band in town when it comes to the possible uh, uh, deployment of nuclear assets. How safe is our system? How modern is our system? What do you worry about? So it's safe, secure, reliable, ready today. We exercise it every day. Uh, it's not modern. Uh, I have no concerns about the, the capabilities of the system today or the next few years, but I am concerned about the capabilities in the late 20s, early 30s, uh, because uh, the Minuteman ICBM, it's a three-stage ICBM, solid mm -hmm. rocket ICBM, eventually it has to be replaced. Uh, submarines can be built for an amazing capabilities, but at, at some point in time they don't go into the water anymore just because they've been under the water so many times. We're coming to the end of life of a lot of our critical capabilities and we have to modernize. It's interesting you talked about uh, uh, President Obama. Uh, the Obama administration, I think you know, if you read the speech in Prague in 2009, it's an amazing speech uh, about a, a nuclear free world. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get to nuclear free world myself, but it's an amazing speech to read. But it's also President Obama that in uh, the last two years of administration made a commitment to modernize the entire nuclear triad again, uh, to modernize the ICBM, the bomber, the submarine, the cruise missile, the nuclear command and control, and the weapons. Why did he make that decision? And why is it being supported by the current administration? It's because the threats in the world require that. Hmm. And if the threats in the world require that, we're going to modernize it again. But if you walk into my command center and you sit down and you watch, and uh, Secretary Mattis was out at the end of September, and uh, it was the last launch of the um, long-range missile from Korea happened while well, I happened to be in, in our headquarters. And he walked down with me and he sat right next to me as we processed the entire event. And the thing, he looked at me and he said, you have exquisite situational awareness of everything that happens mm. here. Because I actually watched the missile take off, fly, impact. I can see it all from my command center. I can provide the right recommendations of what to do. Mm. But his direction to me and the president's direction to me is to create the conditions for diplomacy to work by being ready mm -hmm. all the time. And we are ready every minute of every day to respond to any event that comes out of North Korea. That's the element of deterrence that has to be clear. And it is clear. Uh, if he goes down that path, it will not end well. But we, my goal is to create the room for diplomacy and sanctions to work. And the only reason I didn't raise my hand on, on your question a while ago uh, was because you asked the question wrong. President Trump by himself can't change the behavior of Kim Jong-un. Mm. But President Trump can create the conditions that the international community can reach out in different ways where we can work with the Republic of Korea, where we can work with our neighbors in the region. We can work with China, we can work with others to try to find a solution to that. So we're gonna keep every bit of pressure that we can on it and we are ready to respond right now right now at this moment. The other day I watched your predecessor, Robert Keller, um, speak in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee about this incredible responsibility that you now have in that conversation with the president before nuclear things. And, and, he, and he said, you know, th 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 that uh, he implied he could push back. Have you thought mm -hmm. about that conversation you might have with the president in this sort of scenario? Uh, I have, and, and we talk about it. Uh, I think some people think we're stupid. <laughs> We're not stupid people. We, we think about these things a lot. When you have this responsibility, how do you not think about it? Mm. And so, but what people forget is this is a military mission and a military function. 
And since the day I joined the service, 36 years ago, every year I get trained in the law of armed conflict. And the law of armed conflict has certain principles. Uh, necessity, distinction, proportionality, unnecessary suffering, all those things are defined. And we get, you know, for 20 years it was the William Calley Meli thing that we were trained on because if you execute an unlawful order, you will go to jail. Mm. You could go to jail for the rest of your life. It applies to nuclear weapons, it applies to small arms, it applies to, to small unit tactics, it applies to everything. And we apply it as we go through it. It's, it's not that difficult. And the way the process works, if, if you want to get into the details later, I'll go into the details later. The way the process works is it's simple. I provide advice to the president, he'll tell me what to do, and if it's, and if it's illegal, guess what's going to happen? You say no. I'm going to say, Mr. President, that's illegal. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to say, what would be legal? And we'll come up with options of a mix of capabilities to respond to whatever the situation is. And that's the way it works. It's not that complicated. But, Thank I, you for, but, but I think it's an interesting story that not many people in the world, nor Americans here. And so it's interesting to actually be walked through the process as they did with these very key decisions. In fact, because I think we have had a period of amnesia about uh, uh, what nuclear weapons in the world means and how to handle them.